In this class, we'll discuss about Maxwell's third equation. Before going to understand the Maxwell third equation, we will look at the Faraday experiment because that formed the basis for the Maxwell third equation. Now, what Faraday has done is, this is a battery. Now what he has done is, he has taken a two coils, let me call as a primary coil, let me take as a secondary coil. Now he has connected a battery to the primary coil and he has connected a galvanometer in the secondary coil. What he observed is, when he has connected the battery here, there was a deflection in the galvanometer. So it means there is some current flowing in this coil. If the deflection is happening, it means there has to be a current flowing there. Now, when he switches the circuit, it means he has connected a battery here and galvanometer here, same response was noted. So, what he said is, there is an induced voltage in the secondary coil when he is trying to, or I can say that there is an induced current flowing in the secondary coil when I am connecting a battery to the primary coil. Now, that EMF is given by minus N d phi by dt. This is one of the very popular equation we have seen in the 12th standard. Now, where n is the number of turns, phi is nothing but the flux linkage and we are talking about rate of change of flux. Okay, so at what is, at what rate the flux is linking. Now, if you remember in the potential topic, can I say this, emf is equal to e dot dl over the line integral because that is nothing but the potential and emf is also nothing but your potential. So can we compare these two equations? Yes, we can compare these two equations. Let us uh, remove n now as of now. So it would be e dot dl over the line integral is nothing but minus d phi by dt. Now let us introduce the magnetic flux density here. What is the magnetic flux density? So we know that V is called as magnetic B is called as magnetic flux density. So, what would be phi? So, it would be nothing but E dot dl over the line integral is nothing but minus d by dt of B dot ds. Now, this is nothing but magnetic flux density. So, it is nothing but magnetic per unit area. So, that ds, so that will get cancelled. So, it is nothing but your phi only. So, let us solve this equation. So, this would be nothing but Now, we have already seen curl strokes theorem. So, we will apply the curl strokes theorem. What is a curl strokes theorem? So, curl strokes theorem. We have already know that. What is that? So, line integral of a dot dl is equal to, it is nothing but The line integral will be converted into a surface integral that what we have already seen in the previous classes. So, we will apply the curl Stokes theorem here. So, E dot dl will become what? Del cross E. So, it will become applying the curl Stokes theorem, it will become del cross E ds and this remains same minus db by dt ds. Comparing these two equations, can I say this is ds, this is ds? If I compare these two equations, this would be nothing but del cross E will be equal to minus dB by dt because this quantity has to equal to this quantity. So, what we have proved is we have proved the Maxwell's third equation. Now, this is also very generic to understand that 
del cross E is giving you, it means the electric field is giving a magnetic field. This we'll see more on this when we'll try to understand the plane waves. So what we have proved is the point form of Maxwell's third equation that is del cross E is equal to minus dB by dt. We'll see the Maxwell fourth equation in the next lecture.